morning, everyone, and welcome to our webinar, Navigating Hospital Indemnity, Enhancing Your Health Insurance Strategy with Nisha Katrin. This is Jordan, the Marketing Coordinator here at AIM. Today's webinar will be recorded and then later posted on our website. This does mean that all attendees will be automatically muted so that we get a quality recording. If you have any questions, go ahead and type them into the chat box and we'll try to answer them throughout the presentation. But if we're unable to get to all the questions, we'll have a member of our marketing team reach out to you individually to make sure you get that answered. Before we get started, we'd like to invite you to join us for next week's webinar on Tuesday, October 15th at 9 a.m. Pacific Time. Lead internal wholesaler Mike Anderson will provide details on the Inflation Reduction Act and why it will have a massive impact on the senior market going forward. And with that, I'll hand it over to Nisha so that we can go ahead and get started. Take it away, Nisha. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. I hope your Tuesday is starting off great. Um, today we'll be talking about navigating hospital indemnity, enhancing your health insurance strategy. First, I want to say, whoop, <laughs> that's how we're starting today. Thank you for taking the time to join me today. Um, in the complex and ever-changing landscape of senior healthcare, ensuring financial security has never been more crucial. Whether it's an emergency or a planned procedure, hospital stays costs add up very quickly and unexpectedly, leaving many families financially vulnerable. That's where hospital indemnity insurance comes into play. My goal is to help explore and show you how this specialized insurance can provide a vital safety net covering expenses that might not be fully addressed. By the end of this presentation, you'll have a clear understanding of how hospital indemnity plans work, their benefits, and how they can be a crucial and critical component of your client's overall financial um, health strategy. So let's delve into how you can protect your client and their loved ones from the financial uncertainties of hospital stays, ensuring peace of mind when they need it most. A little agenda, diving into some key benefits, eligibility and enrollment, comparing plans, FAQs, common misconceptions, and for the new agents, how to pivot the conversations, selling strategies, and next steps. Hospital stays for clients can be overwhelming and stressful, not only for their health, but for their wallet. Even with them having other medical insurance, some costs may not be covered. Unexpected healthcare costs can damage a client's financial situation. Research has found that healthcare costs have caused serious financial problems for patients over the last few years. 44% have had to set up a payment plan with their hospital or healthcare professional. 42% spent all or the majority of, of their savings on medical expenses. Hospital indemnity plans can provide your client with peace of mind by protecting their savings from unexpected hospital costs and high out-of-pocket costs. It complements their existing health insurance by giving them cash to help with costs those plans do not cover. Besides day one coverage, it allows the client the flexibility to maximize days of coverage, daily benefit options, and several different riders. The client can customize the plan, decide when the benefits are paid to them. With the hospital indemnity plan, there is no deductible, and they can receive payment even if they have other insurance, guaranteed issue if they're between the ages of 60 and 79 when they sign the application, there is no network of hospitals, so they can choose any hospital they like. Their policy remains in force as long as their premiums are paid on time. Because hospital indemnity is a supplemental insurance and its benefit is a lump sum payment, it pairs well with other plans. So who might benefit? While it is impossible to know who will require hospital care, there are some circumstances that would in indicate a person might benefit from hospital indemnity coverage. These reasons can apply both to an employee and their family members. 
a person, they may have a chronic condition that increases their risk of an emergency event like a heart attack, stroke, seizure, allergic reaction, or an autoimmune related illness. A whopping 60% of Americans are affected by some form of chronic illness. They anticipate having a medical procedure in the future that they may, that might require a hospital stay, um, knee surgery, hip surgery, back surgery, for example. They participate in risky activities like snow skiing, skateboarding, or surfing, which can lead to an injury requiring hospitalization. If you're a mom out there and you have boy children who feels like death is his best friend, <laughs> and he does everything possible to try and challenge it. <laughs> That's an example of risky activity, jumping off the counter. Or was that only my child? Um, they want to add extra security to protect their family's finances in case of an emergency. Now let's talk about eligibility and enrollment who is eligible for hospital indemnity insurance. Typically available to individuals and families, including employees through employer-sponsored plans and individuals purchasing coverage independently. Most plans have age limits, commonly available to those age 16 to 64, depending on the carrier, through some insurance may offer coverage to older adults, again, depending on the carrier. Medical underwriting, while some hospital indemnity, indemnity plans do not require medical underwriting, others may have minimal health questions or pre-existing conditions uh, limitation. Employment status, often available to both full-time and part-time employees if offered through an employee, employer, excuse me, with some plans extending coverage to dependent. Requirements and limitations, again, back to pre-existing conditions, some plans may have exclusions or waiting periods for pre-existing conditions, typically defined as conditions for which medical advice or treatment was received within a certain period before the coverage began. Benefits may be subject to a maximum limit per hospital stay per year, varying by plan. There may be a waiting period before benefits become payable, ranging from a few days to several months after the policy's effective date however your client customizes their plan, basically. Employer sponsor plans, depending on the state you live in, uh, get with your AIM marketer to help discuss which carriers are available that offers work sites. Open enrollment, typically offered during annual enrollment periods, allows employees to select coverage for the upcoming year. Of course, special enrollment is another opportunity. Employees may enroll or make changes to their plan during special enrollment periods triggered by qualifying life events, such as marriage, birth, or job loss. Employers often provide resources and assistance, such as benefits, counselors, or online tools to help employees understand and choose appropriate coverage. So considerations for choosing a plan. Figuring out and assessing personal and family health care needs, considering factors like age, health, status, and financial situation. Evaluate the fixed cash benefits offered and ensure they are sufficient to cover potential expenses. Compare premiums and out-of-pocket costs to ensure the plan fits within the budget. Consider additional features such as portability which allows coverage to continue even if the individual changes jobs, and optional riders for enhanced benefits. Now let's move on to the nitty gritty. Cancer, who starting to become America's uninvited friend. Um, it may not be the first thing that a person thinks about when they're diagnosed with cancer, but the cost of treatment is very expensive even for people with government insurance like Medicare or Medicaid. About 1.8 million new cases of cancer are diagnosed each year in the United States. And patients and their families split the bill for an estimated 5.6 billion annually in out-of-pocket expenses for things such as surgery, radiation therapy, chemotherapy, and other treatments. 
According to the American Cancer Society, the high cost of cancer care are projected to grow from 190.2 billion, and that was in 2015, according to the National Cancer Institute, so going from 190 to 246.6 billion by 2030. The American Cancer Society that estimates that. That is an increase of $56 billion over a 15 year period, which is really sad. The financial burden on the patient is staggering uh, with the NCI estimating the per patient cost average of breast cancer, leukemia, prostate cancer, that's just to name a few. There are more than 200 different types of cancer and there's no one size fits all cancer treatment. That's why cost of cancer treatment vary significantly from patient to patient. Per patient costs also may vary widely depending on the type of insurance also and their financial status too, if they can afford to pay out of pocket. But several consistent factors contribute to cancer cancer patients overall health care costs such as premiums, deductibles, co-payments or co-pay, co-insurance, out-of-pocket maximum or out-of-pocket cap. This means these limits cap what the client must pay each year before health plans start to pay 100% for covered in-network benefits. Another factor in-network versus out-of-network, unexpected costs. For some patients, managing the financial cost of cancer care is nearly as stressful as receive, receiving a cancer diagnosis. Again, it's not the first thing that you think about when someone is telling you you have a time limit or even you could beat it. It's still the word cancer. So in looking at what is available through a customized hospital indemnity plan, I put up GTO and Medico. They pay a cash benefit upon first diagnosis which will give the client and their families a running start to cover some costs associated with the cancer diagnosis. Looking at the slides, um, GTL pays a uh, client a chosen benefit of $2,500 upwards of $20,000. And if you look to the right, the initial care for breast cancer is at $43,516. Continuing is about 5518 and in their last year of life, it's $109,727. First diagnosis, knowing that you have access to $20,000 can at least put your lips above the water so you can inhale <laughs> before you go back under the water and possibly just scream and so, yeah. Medical pays. 1000 to 10 grand with the first diagnosis. It has a maximum of a one payment and coverage will terminate after payment of benefits. It's only available for persons up to age 80. GTO, uh, after you receive your lump sum, your benefits are eligible to restore with a recurrence benefit rider. It is not available in Georgia, unfortunately. But taking a look at the cost, of breast cancer, leukemia, and prostate cancer, the initial care and continuing care and end of life care. It may not be a, a lot, but just unknowing that there's something that can help offset that out of pocket cost um, can bring some relief. So, going into comparing each plan, we're going to start with GTO. On the, right, on the left side, we have um, Cigna Preferred Savings, Medicare, HMO. Basically, what is uh, offered through a med, med Advantage plan, you have inpatient hospital to $320 a day for one to five days, zero days for 60 to 90. A GTL hospital indemnity plan matching a six day benefit, it's about $30 more. Um, a day, and then just in looking at comparing, having this supplemental insurance to help op offset the cost difference, um, they have an additional $20 for the hospital confinement. Outpatient, uh, the copay is zero to 350. GTO offers $500. Skilled nursing facility, you're looking at $100 a day, in addition, if you want another option of $210 a day. 
emergency room or urgent care, ambulance. Taking an ambulance ride now with insurance is about $250 to $1,500. Either advanced life support or basic life support without insurance is $500 to $3,500. GTL, their base benefits kick in after six hours. No hospital stay required for emergency room benefits. Affordable rates. Their rates don't increase as you age. Simplify underwriting with instant approval. Guaranteed issue ages 64 and a half to 70. And then they have riders, skilled nursing facility, ambulance, outpatient therapy. Manhattan Life. Again, I took a different uh, carrier, Aetna Medical Eagle Plan. Aetna, Aetna, we can all tomato, tomato. <laughs> Um, looking at their hospital, comparing and looking at the hospital indemnity select plan, same, six day, $450 a day, 64 and a half to 70 guaranteed issue, first day hospital admission benefit, $500 per occurrence up to 16, six times per year, not, not 16. Outpatient. Uh, you're looking at four, $500 per day, payable up to two times per calendar year. Emergency room, $150 per day. This helps um, offset the difference in between. From Aetna's uh, emergency care of $120, you have Manhattan Life, $150. That's an additional $30 that they can pay on top of uh, their urgent care. Manhattan Life has issue ages 18 to 89, guaranteed renewable for life. Again, guaranteed issued for 64 and a half to 70. So those now coming into AEP that are turning 65, this is a great guaranteed issue to have. Benefit available immediately, competitive rates. Rates do not, rates do not increase as the client ages. Riders, skilled nursing facility, first day hospital admission, outpatient surgical procedure. And Medico, another comparison, hospital indemnity plan, six day benefit as well. Their issue ages is 18 to 85, restoration of benefits, 60 days. No application fee or annual fee, guaranteed issue 60 to 79. There is a 7% discount if they live with another adult. Simplify issue with limited health questions. These are all great carriers that you can discuss with your clients as you're talking with them about AEP to help offset any unexpected hospital costs. Let's jump into some FAQs. How does the hospital indemnity plan work? Disclaimer, if you are a new agent, this is probably some questions that you may have. If you are a seasoned agent, let's do a refresher. So how does the hospital indemnity plan work? The plan pays cash benefits directly to your client for services related to a plan or unplanned covered inpatient hospital stay while they are covered under the plan. Can they have more than one? No, not allowed to have more than one uh, plan. Is the hospital indemnity plan compatible with the health savings account? Yes, the hospital indemnity plan is compatible with the health savings account. If a person leaves the company, can they keep their coverage? What is the cost and how do they keep go about keeping the plan. So yes, the hospital indemnity plan allows you to keep your existing coverage for the same rate and make direct payments to the carrier. This is a portable portability option. You may exercise this option if the employment ends for any reason other than for gross misconduct. The portability form is in the plan document sections of the member's website. Refer them to certificate of coverage for more portability provisions the portability option is not available in New York, shocker, and Vermont. What happens if a covered person dies while covered under the hospital indemnity plan? Benefits will be paid to that 
the, the member's beneficiary on file. If one isn't on file, payment will go to their estate. If you have additional questions, please reach out to one of us he marketers here at AIM and we'll be happy to assist you further. Some slight misconceptions. I already have enough coverage from my primary insurance. Understandable. One of the most common misconceptions consumers have about supplemental insurance is that it is redundant. Considering they already have coverage from their primary health or life insurance policies, however, this belief fails to recognize the unique benefits that supplemental insurance can provide. Unlike primary insurance, which may only cover specific medical expenses or provide a fixed sum in the event of an unfortunate incident, like losing a job, Supplemental insurance complements the existing coverage by filling the gaps that may be left behind. A person can go undergo treatment for a critical illness that may substantial that, whoop, whoop, that may have substantial expenses not fully covered by their primary insurance. Supplemental insurance can step in, provide additional financial support for expenses, filling the gaps such as travel, accommodation, during treatment, and other expenses. When you're marketing supplemental insurance, clarifying this misconception will clear up marketing messages. Marketing messages can emphasize how supplemental insurance serves as an extra layer of coverage, ensuring comprehensive coverage and peace of mind, and the portability of it. Misconception number two, the insurance is expensive and not worth the, co the cost. Um, this often hinders consumers from considering the insurance. Um, the perception is that it's unnecessarily expensive. It is important for financial institutions to communicate the various options available and highlight the potential long-term savings and benefits of enrolling in supplemental insurance. The key is to dispel the myths, the lies, in educating that consumer about the potential financial burden they might face in the absence of adequate coverage. I going back to cancer and the cost of the fix, the 56 billion increase that will occur over the next 15 years. You can help them understand a relatively small premium for supplemental insurance can help safeguard them from unexpected expenses, comparing the cost of supplemental insurance to put to the potential financial ramifications of being underinsured can be a persuasive approach to demonstrate its value. It's only for seniors or unhealthy individuals. Mind you, going back to Medico in Manhattan, they start as low as age 18. This misconception stems from a lack of awareness about the about the diverse range of supplemental insurance products available today in the market. When you're talking with your clients, it's important to highlight the inclusive nature of supplemental insurance, catering to people of all ages and health statuses, from hospital accident insurance that covers hospital, hospitalization after covered injuries, to recuperative care, insurance that helps with costs associated with recuperating after a covered accident or injury. These plans are tailored to suit various needs and lifestyles. It's not just group accident and sickness coverage either. By clarifying the misconception that supplemental insurance isn't meant for the young and healthy, you should be in a position to educate people that these products are versatile and valuable financial wellness tools. Misconception number four, filing claims for supplemental insurance is complicated and time consuming. A common deterrent for consumers when considering supplemental insurance is the misconception that filing claims and receiving benefits can be a cumbersome process. You can help them understand this fear by working with an administrator that provides consumers with a seamless and simple registration account management and claims experience. A lot of carriers have uh, patient portals that they can access via app or web. 
so that'll allow them to handle their account on their own. They should be able to speak directly to an expert customer service representative as well who can help them guide through the website any additional needs, or you could be that person if you are familiar with the portal as well. So by addressing these misconceptions, financial institutions can showcase their commitment to customer satisfaction, making supplemental insurance an attractive choice for those seeking hassle-free protection. Again, disclaimer, for all the new agents out there who are stepping into the insurance world, how to pivot the conversation. Pivoting the conversation towards hospital indemnity insurance requires understanding the client's needs and preventing the benefits and presenting the benefits in a relatable and compelling way. So sitting down and having a needs analysis conversation with them, asking probing questions. Can you tell me about your current health insurance plan and any out-of-pocket expenses you've had recently? Have you ever had a hospital stay? And were there any unexpected costs that weren't covered by your insurance? Highlight the benefits of hospital indemnity insurance by letting them know it fills the gap. Many people are surprised to find that even with good health insurance, they can still face significant out-of-pocket expenses during a hospital stay. Hospital indemnity insurance can help cover those costs. Provide a real-life example. Share some personal stories or scenarios that either you've experienced yourself or witnessed. Personalize the situation. Uh, relate the insurance to their personal situation or concerns. Betty, considering you have a young family, hospital indemnity insurance can provide financial peace of mind in a case of unforeseen hospital vis visits, ensuring you can focus on recovery without worrying about additional costs. Um, you could be walking down the way and your ankle just decides to give out and you twist it and you're just like, I was only walking on the sidewalk. That can lead, lead to an unforeseen hospital visit. Addressing common objections. I understand that adding another policy might seem costly, but hospital indemnity insurance is often quite affordable and can save you significantly more in the event of a hospital stay. Highlight the flexibility. The policy pays you directly, giving you the freedom to use the funds as needed, whether for medical bills, household expenses, or anything else. Provide clear information. This insurance pays a set amount per day, depending on the carrier that they choose. You let them know the number for, how many, for hospital stays and can also cover additional services like ambulance rides or surgery. It's designed to complement your existing health insurance by filling in the gap. Encourage a decision. Create a sense of urgency. Encourage them to consider the policy without feeling pressured. Giving the unpredictability of health issues, true fact, having this coverage in place sooner rather than later can be a smart move. Let's take a look at some options that fit your budget. By focusing on that client's personal experience and needs, and even sharing some of your personal stories and experiences and witnessing, you can effectively pivot the conversation towards the benefits and the necessity of hospital indemnity insurance. Some selling strategies. Understanding the market, knowing your niche, leveraging data and statistics, Pick a core carrier and standard, standardize the sale process. Hospital indemnity plans are designed to fill in the gap of Medicare Advantage, so that would be a target market. If you're a new agent, open enrollment is the perfect time to implement this, as you will have a consistent number of prospects to speak with every week regarding their upcoming health insurance coverage. 84% of all MedAdvantage plans have a significant gap that poses a real and meaningful financial risk to policyholders should they become hospitalized. As MAPD plans have hospital co-pays between $200 and $400 per day, and the average hospital stay is four and a half days. Just bringing it all together and to create a simplified sales process 
you have the hospital co-pays and the average length of stay at the hospital. Let's talk about a top, top carrier. I'm a little biased. GTO is the leading carrier by more than 6.5 times the second and third place contenders, which are United Healthcare Advantage Guard and Continental Life, Aetna, Aetna. <laughs> Make it easy on yourself, the agent, and go with the top carrier in the market to at least get you started. You can always choose another option down the line once you're confident and successful, knowledgeable with your sales price as well. The one, two, three, four, five method. It's a methodology that strips away all complexity for insurance agents to remember how simple hospital indemnity is to pair with Medicare Advantage plans. In a nutshell, you need one insurance carrier that offers 200, 300, and 400 daily benefit for a total of five days. It is. It's as easy as counting from one to five. This method will work with 80% of the plans on the market, and you do not have to think what to present to your, com your customers. Keep it simple. Don't overthink it. I wanted to share with you some of our carriers that um, we have in regards to hospital indemnity. There's my good old best friend, Aetna, Allstate, Bankers, Fidelity, Liberty Bankers, Heartland National, Cigna, GPO, Life Secure, Manhattan Life, United American, and Wallaby. In those carriers, if you are not already contracted with one of those, let's take the next step, get contracted. One of the most important things is to make sure you are in compliance with these carriers before you start marketing and selling their products. Speak to your clients. Decide who your first 10 calls are going to be. Begin the conversation, learn about their needs, and also learn at least one personal thing about your client. That way you can start building that relationship and that trust so that you can make accurate recommendations. Also, honor your commitment. You made time available for this pre presentation. Thank you. This is your business, and you're here because you want it to grow. That only happens if you follow through with the information and your clients. We here at AIM are just as committed to making sure your business grows as you are. Let's talk about money, 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 money. GTL just started quarter four, uh, quarter four bonus program. For applications submitted from October 1st to December 31st, uh, submitted five to 10 applications, you receive $50 per app, keyword per app, 11 to 25, 75 per app, 26 applicate, plus applications, $100 per app. I don't know about you, that sounds like a lot to me. I could use some extra grocery money, <laughs> possibly some gas money, maybe even some Christmas money. If you haven't already contracted with GTL, this is a great opportunity to get contracted with them. They have a great opportunity for you to put a little extra bonus in your, your pocket. They also have increased their claim process to 40% faster. So. If a client is speaking to you about the claims process, GTO has made it a point to be 40% faster, which reduces their hospital turnaround time. So they understand that happy, well-informed hospital indemnity client equals improved retention, increased referrals, and increased sales for you. Now it's time to say goodbye. See you real soon. Thank you guys so much. For joining me today. I am Kanisha Katrin, aka Nisha. You can reach me at the numbers listed, email, website. Also, follow us on social media because that's our new best friend too. If you have any questions, one of the markers will be reaching out to you or you can give us a call. Thank you again. I hope you guys have an awesome rest of your Tuesday. Bye!